I'm using the cheapest mountain bike parts from Amazon.com to upgrade this Diamondback Overdrive. Let's talk about it. All right, this is a Diamondback Overdrive 27.5. Cheap mountain bikes and mountain bike upgrades. Does that mean making a trip to Walmart, Amazon, or Facebook Marketplace? Let's talk about it and break down some of the best options currently. If you recently acquired a mountain bike craving, you might be interested in a high value, low budget bike, but soon find out there are only so many options available. Buying new in shop, hopefully a bike shop, but more than likely a Walmart. Buying new online, again, more than likely Walmart, but Amazon and other retailers like Bike Direct are an option or the last option, buying used and upgrading. The best option here is Facebook Marketplace. Out of the three, the best value for money will go to buying used on Facebook Marketplace. And really this video isn't about where to buy, it's about how to cheaply upgrade your mountain bike from parts available on Amazon and AliExpress if you're willing to wait. At the time of recording this video, I was able to upgrade all the important parts of any cheap mountain bike upgrade build for under $100, including seat post, seat, grips, chain ring, shifter, chain, and brake levers. But again, this style build is probably best suited for light trail and urban riding as opposed to heavy trail riding or even downhill. The cost analysis of this build is as follows. I picked up the Diamondback Overdrive for $100 on Facebook Marketplace. That by far was the best deal here, and if you could find something similar, then by all means go and pick it up, whatever the condition is. The grips were five, the seat was 14, seat post, 15, chain ring, $10, shifter, 15, brake lever, $5, and the chain was 15. The subtotal here was $179, plus my time and labor at 10 hours, and I price my time at around $10 per hour, so another $100 added to make a grand total of $279. Now, you have to remember that this bike will be your bike. With a build, if you're trying to resell it, then you just have to remember that you'll probably not be making much money on that build unless you find a really uh, great deal on a bike that is even cheaper than what I found. Otherwise, you'll be putting a lot of time, which is money, and the margin for profit is very low. Just a note, this Overdrive 27.5 sells new for around $500 if you could find it. With a used build like this, you'll likely encounter imperfections to the bike of interest. For example, this bike had pretty bad paint chipping on the top tube, which would potentially turn a buyer off, and most notably, the wheels on this particular Diamondback were a bit out of true, but still workable, and the front hub had some noise that I was unable to determine what was going on. None of these issues are going to stop you from enjoying the trail, but they'll likely be parts you would upgrade as your riding progresses. Now that you have a good idea of the cost, let's jump over and see what the bike looked like when I first picked it up. All right, this is a Diamondback Overdrive 27.5. The front wheel uh, obviously doesn't have a tube in it. Uh, the group set looks a little bit thrashed, but I can't be sure of how it's shifting since I don't have a tube in it. And uh, it needs a seat, obviously. It needs some new new bar uh, grips, I mean, and it should be pretty much good to go. Um, I'm, again, I get these bikes and I try not to add any parts to them. Uh, it'd be one thing if I built one bike a month and maybe profited like a couple hundred bucks, but whenever you have 15 bikes in this stable, it's hard to, it's hard to do. Um, so yeah, this is the Diamondback Overdrive. So I'm just coming back to this Diamondback over drive one more time. I put a, uh, a front tire on just to test out the shifting. The rear derailleur seems to work fine. The front derailleur is hacked. It's just not good. So I'll probably just end up putting a one by chain ring up front and then uh, taking off the derailleur in the front completely 
that way the spike is functioning. You can see how sagged that chain is, so it's gonna need some work in the back too. But it, it rides, the, the shifting is fine in the back. It's, it's definitely rideable, and yeah, it won't be much to make this thing a trail-worthy bike. This is probably one of the better bikes that I have in my stable right now. What do you think of this transformation? How would you build this bike, and would it be something that you would ride? Although they are simple upgrades, the bike looks much better and more importantly will perform better. Let's take a closer look at the parts and break it down. We are still rocking the stock 8-speed Shimano Atlas in the back. Note that this is not a clutch derailleur, so modification may be necessary to tension the chain for heavier trail riding. A lot of these cheaper, low-end mountain bikes will come with a derailleur that doesn't have a clutch installed from the shop. Things to look for in a used mountain bike are a crank set that already has removable chain ring bolts. This way you're saving money by just adding a narrow wide chain ring which converts it to a one by system rather than needing to replace the entire crank set. The stock pedals are something that you may want to upgrade and you could see that these are pretty chewed up but they seem to have life left in them and for more urban MTB they will do the trick. Like I spoke about earlier, the wheels aren't the best, but they are workable. Arison Mount Bona tires, I I've never heard of them, but they'll roll. They're wrapped around these Wyman wheels, and again, those are pretty low end, so you'll want to upgrade those eventually here, but those are usually the most expensive thing to upgrade on a bike. And here we have the cheapest seat and seat post combo on Amazon at the time of recording. The seat has the general outline of a road or MTB saddle, but the proportions are just slightly bigger than what you'd expect. Again, this will work for urban cruising or maybe your preference is a more cushy seat. Either way, $15 is $15. And probably the best value here are the lock-on grips for $5. For any bike out there, adding a fresh set of grips will seriously change the feel of the bike. The only downfall of these lock-ons in particular are the fact that they have bar ends that aren't integrated into the actual grip. You have to pop them in and they aren't the tightest fit, but the tolerance is, is pretty loose. So now that you've seen the build, let's tie it up and talk about it. Overall, this mountain bike build is a great option for anyone new into mountain biking or wanting to learn bike mechanics. I don't think this is the best option if you're looking to shred the trails without issue though. So if that's something that you're looking to do, check out my full suspension mountain bike build I'm currently working on to get a good idea of pricing for something more high end but still on a budget. This style build is perfect for urban riding with some light trail use but the most important part here is the platform you choose. Something like this highly upgradable Diamondback Overdrive is perfect because you'll be able to make it a serious performer if you put some more money into it. It's all about the frame and platform. But that's it for this build. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I post every week and it's a huge help from viewers like you to support grassroots programming like this. Chaka Mahalo, I'll see you on the next one. Yeah. Yeah.